I don't know how the hell this sample actually snuck into the S plus. I don't know what they're thinking. Today, we are going to go through 10 different patch 1.1 tier lists from JPCNKR. We're going to have a look at their general trends and their rationale. And then I'm going to go through my own tier list and my rationale. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you're going to hate tier lists. Hi, I'm Lace. Let's get into it. But before that, here's a quick word from the sponsor of this video. King Arthur Legends Rise is a new turn-based squad RPG game developed by Kabam, the developers behind Marvel Contest of Champions and Disney Mirrorverse. Set in the Arthurian myth, it features immersive quests with an expansive main story mode at launch, incredible 3D graphics and visual effects, powered by Unreal Engine 5, strategic turn-based combat with an in-depth team-building system to suit your playstyle, epic dungeon boss battles via restricted areas that are about 10 times your size, character collection via a gacha system, because that's, uh, that's what we do on this channel, and finally, they've even got cross-platform play between mobile and PC. At the moment, the game is up for pre-registration, and a launch date will be announced very soon. An official reveal and some game feature trailers have just dropped on their socials, and the open beta will be up on the 29th of June. So if you would like to hype yourself up or learn a little bit more about the game, then head on down into the description or the pinned comment below and follow the links. Thank you again to King Arthur, Legends Rise, and Kabam. And with that, let's get back to the video. This first tier list is probably the best one out of them all because they actually run real comps. And here you can see all of the different comps that they actually tested. There is one in particular I want you guys to take note of, and that's this one right here, which is the physical Silver Wolf comp. The reason why I want you to take note is because a lot of people, a lot of the tier lists that we're about to see are going to rate Su Shang very lowly. And I want this to be a reminder that whilst individually Su Shang may not be, you know, giga top tier, giga cracked in a team comp like this, it turns out she's pretty high performing. And so other than that one, I would say have a look at the rest, but ignore the first one because it literally translates to let's see who dies first. As you can tell, it is a glass cannon comp. They do test a couple of other mono comps such as the ice comp, the fire comp over here. However, the most important observation here is that Silver Wolf is essentially everywhere. She's in about like 80%, 90% of the comps. So in this case, what we need to remember is that we're gonna be running two teams in MOC. What this confirms to me is that we need to run this comp over here, which essentially is your hyper carry comp without Silver Wolf. So Seely, Bronya, if you have her, or Tingyun, Hela, and a healer, or Japad. And instead of Seely, you can instead use your Jingyuan or whoever. And for your second team, it's going to be your Silver Wolf team. That's probably like the most optimal allocation that we can do right now. And so the reason why I mentioned this is because you guys can tell, right? Silver Wolf is just so incredibly valuable. And so keep that in mind as we go through these tier lists. And so in this video, he actually creates a DPS ranking as well, where the white bar represents the normal action based damage and the yellow bar represents the break damage. And so you can see that to literally nobody's surprise, Sili and Jingyuan are the top two leaders. The reality is, is that the meta right now is geared towards more single target damage and therefore hunt units. There is a world where Jing Yuan and your Himikos and the other erudition AoE characters actually thrive over your Seelies, but that would be up to Hoyoverse to see if they would actually put out like two or three bulky boss monsters out at a time instead of like one boss with a bunch of adds. Other than that, you can see Su Shang, Yan Qing, and Qing Chue coming in at A+. What I will say for these three is that Su Shang is the easiest to use by far, and it it comes to no surprise that a lot of her damage is actually break damage base because the break damage for physical, which is also known as bleed, actually does percentage health damage. On the other hand, for Yenqing, it's really easy to build him considering you just have to spam crit damage, but the unfortunate reality is, is that he needs to be protected and not be hit. And lastly, for Qing Chue, you kind of just need to know what you're doing because what you could end up doing with Qing Chue is utterly out DPSing everyone like you can see on the screen or doing no DPS at all. Moving down the rankings, we have Hook and Clara in A tier, which is of no surprise to anyone considering they are both relatively strong units. But what does surprise me is Dan Hung at the B plus down here right next to Himeko. On paper, this guy is supposed to be actually relatively strong. I suspect it's because he doesn't really have a working Silver Wolf team and that's why his personal DPS is looking a little bit low. So the video maker also ranks the Harmony units with the Tingyun at S, Bronya at S, literally to the surprise of nobody. But what is interesting is that you'll see the Asta at the S over here. Now, Asta seems to only really be appreciated by the CN community. You won't see her very much in the global community or even the KR community. And as for how they're testing with the Yukong, 
I don't freaking know, dude. Like, these Chinese people, they're just cracked, okay? They're probably doing simulations in their mind or something. I don't know. After that, what we have are the Nihility debuffers. So we've got Silver Wolf at the S+, plus, again, to the surprise of nobody. But what I do want to say is that S+, plus means that she is a cut above Pella and Welt. And I think that it is true. She's just so incredibly in demand because of the opportunities that she creates that no other character can create. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then go ahead and check out my Silver Wolf guide on my channel. On the other hand, Pella, Welt, no surprise there either. Pella, AoE defense down, 42%, fast energy regen and cleanse. And we've got Welt with his slows and damage amplifications. Slows are gonna get a lot more important as we get into the late game because there is only so much speed that you can stack. And so that's a lot of the majority of my thoughts that will translate into my tier list a little bit later. Let's have a look at this second tier list over here. And so how it does start off is with a Yenching in the B tier. I personally don't 100% agree with this assessment. I think that if you play him well, he is like an S minus. If you don't play him well, he is still at least an A. However, flicking through this one, everything else kind of seems to be in line with what we would expect. But something that I did want to point out is the Japad at S+. Especially in the CN community, he is very well regarded. But if I flick back to this one over here and show you the damage shots, what you will notice is that the moment that Japad or even the Fire TB comes into a team, there is a massive DPS loss. And I guess it makes sense, right? Because the moment you introduce a tank or extra survivability, it means you're giving up DPS. However, I do think that it's gonna be like this meta for a little bit longer. It'll probably be a while before we can actually run tankless teams like these ones over here, except for the physical one, which is why I called it out. I do think that this is quite feasible right now. And so let's jump over to the third tier list, which is this one here. So they've actually attached an image, which is this one right here. And as you can see, we've got the Jingyuan and the Sili in the same tier. The way that this author has done the tier list is actually break it into three different categories, the different use cases. The first one is MOC, the second one is SU, and the third one is Open World. With that in mind, however, it's hard to agree that Bronya is below these two. And the reason is because if we do assess her against the Open World criteria, yeah, she isn't going to be as useful. But otherwise, what you guys are going to notice is that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the top 10 are going to be essentially the same. They're all going to sit in the S, S plus kind of tier. And that is pretty consistent in the next few tier lists that we look at. However, when you get past the S and the S plus tiers, when you go from the A to the C tier, it gets really freaking weird, such as like this one right here. Unfortunately, as much as I love Himiko myself, she really isn't that good where I would place her in the same tier as Pella or even above Sushang and Hook and Dan Heng. This is what I meant by getting weird. Arlen is not good. Arlen has too much risk for a medium reward. And so just scrolling through, I think that the Himiko is the anomaly. She should probably be rated more at like a T2 in this list here. And the Arlen should probably also be a T2 slash T3. But otherwise, this one looks all right. All right, so next we've got the KR Bros. And as you can tell, again, the top 10 are relatively similar, except for this guy right here. I don't know how the hell this Sampo actually snuck into the S+. Plus. I don't know what they're thinking. I do think that Sampo does have a place in the meta one day, potentially a dot meta, but that day is not today. Otherwise, it kind of looks like Himiko is kind of being a little bit overvalued just from my own perspective. And our Hook, Dunhang, and Sushang are getting disrespected. And look, my guys, Himiko is not bad. It's just that when you compare her against the other ones in that tier, she just isn't as good. She's just been unfortunately cursed with some pretty bad ratios and the meta right now does not support what she does. AOE. And so the next KR bro has something similar where you've got the Himiko as well as the Yanqing above these three characters. I I don't know where this is coming from, but for this tier list, he's at least split it out to DPS and support over here. This one is your S tier, AKA irreplaceable, I think he calls it. And honestly, this tier list to me, I would actually agree with it if you just move the Himiko down with the Serval. And so with that, let's move on to the JP bros over here. Now again, top 10, pretty much virtually identical. However, this JP bro in particular also rates Himiko a little bit too highly. And somehow Natasha got kicked out of the, the top echelon. If I flick through some of the next JP bros one, you can see Himiko at B, got Himiko at B over here, got Himiko at B over here. It's pretty clear that generally Himiko is being rated, I guess, a little bit more appropriately from what we know today. Other than that, everything else looks pretty standard aside from the Yenching up here. 
a lot of people are going to put him in the S and a lot of people are also going to put him in like the A or like the low Bs. And so moving on to the next one over here, you can see same, same, same top 10 and they've also valued Yanqing highly. However, in this case, they've actually rated the Clara and the Fire Trailblazer relatively highly in comparison to the other ones. I agree with the Fire Trailblazer assessment. I do think that he is, at this stage of the game, still very, very good. As for Clara, I do think that she suffers the same fate as Su Shang, where individually, she's not exactly the greatest, especially because the moment she gets CC'd, it's game over. She can't counter anymore. But if you are able to actually sit down and think about it and replace a preservation with a bruiser like Clara, then I do think that it is a net gain in the long run. Other than that point, I think everyone else is pretty fair. The only one that I would kind of contest would be the March 7th. And I do think that March 7th was really good early game. However, these days, she seems to be a little bit harder to fit into teams, especially as we move towards like kind of monkey brain, unga bunga DPS teams. March 7th, she doesn't really contribute to that kind of meta. And so it's for that reason that I would say that she is a cut below all of these units actually. Now the next tier list is pretty interesting interesting not because it's like really different as you can tell it looks largely the same but on the second tab over here they actually have an Adelond tier list unfortunately I can't comment on this one because I'll never go above E0 for any of my five stars and so in terms of the last two I'm gonna skim them because again the top 10 are virtually the same and I think at this point I've pretty much covered off almost all of my thoughts regarding each of the characters that I really need to say something for. And so my guys, let's start talking about my tier list, which is this one right here. To literally nobody's surprise, the top 10 are the top 10. However, I do have a few observations and predictions and context that I did want to give. In most of these kinds of games, supports are usually more future-proof than DPSs. Now, I would say that the same holds true here except it's to a lesser effect. And the reason is because eventually we're gonna have to build a DPS for every single element. And so what that means is that for something or somebody to power creep the Sealy over here, there would have to be a quantum attacker. However, that requirement of building a DPS for every element, Silver Wolf kind of negates that because of her weakness implant where we can kind of go like monkey brain, uh, semi mono teams. And that combined with the fact that she's ultra cute is why I think she's one of the best units in the game, if not the best, and why she's not gonna get dethroned at any time soon. As for the Sealy and the Bronya, they should not be coming as a surprise. Sealy at this point is better than Jing Yuan in most scenarios, and Bronya, in my opinion, is a cut above the Ting Yun. However, depending on your use case, especially if you need an energy juicer, Ting Yun could certainly be right there. Now, the interesting one is the Japad over here. The reality is, is that Japad makes it so that you can actually clear MOC without a healer. And that's pretty nuts, right? Because there aren't actually very many characters that will let you do that. However, as time goes on, Japad, Fire MC, Preservation Units, I do think that their relevance will actually push them down the tier list. Because again, as we go towards endgame, we're going to be starting to trade sustain for DPS. So in return, I think the first move is that the preservations are going to go down and the destructions are going to come up because they are essentially off tank DPSs, some of them with sustain, such as your hook, such as some other people on the page. Otherwise, the decision that I made for Yanqing is for him to sit in the A grade. I just think that his requirement to not get hit is just way too hard to manage because especially in MOC, a lot of the bosses and the big mobs actually do AoE damage and sometimes you really just can't avoid that. And even if you can play him perfectly and never get hit, I would still say that he is objectively worse than Jing Yuan. So at best, he would be like an S minus. In terms of the healers, I'm talking Bai Lu, I'm talking Natasha. I do think that pure healers are going to get eventually phased out in favor of the healers that have like offensive support capability. I'm talking if they like give up a little bit of healing capability for some attack or crit rate buff, maybe even defense down. It just goes with the philosophy of trading off sustained for damage as we move along the journey. And as for Serval, yeah, she's kind of rated a little bit low right now, but there is a future where she is a teammate for Kafka. The last one I do want to talk about is this Qingche over here. I don't know, man. I don't know if she deserves to be in C or S++. And so I've just put her in A for now. If you want to roll the dice, then go play her. She is actually a lot of fun. But otherwise, I'm going to call her position on this tier list the biggest mystery in the game. And so my guys, that is the end. Let me know how you feel about this tier list. If you agree, disagree. Otherwise, I would really appreciate a like, subscribe, notification bell on. And as your girl Ching Chue once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.